sleep. Your body yearns for an everlasting vacation. <laughs> oh. Speaking of singing, the uh, American Idol is turning up. I mean, it's turning up. Some of you guys may think that that's like kind of lame and shit to, you know, be watching American Idol. But if you actually watch it and you have a soul, if you got a heart, if you enjoy music at all or just dreams coming true, then if you actually watch it, in my humble opinion, it's very happy. It's a very good show. It's, yeah, uh, you, you, you kind of got to watch it a little bit from the, well, you don't have to, but watching you, from mean, the beginning is you start to, you start to, you learn you know, the feel, people. Yeah. You learn the people, you feel their stories and you kind of get a, you get a sense of connection with at least a few of them. And then you start like, you know, you can't wait till that person sings. And then some people don't perform good one week and you're just like, ah, man, they're not. They don't have it, but then next week they just blow it out of the water, dude. It's just great. I mean, it's great. It's it's insane. Like, I mean, there's all ages on there, but some of these younger kids are blowing it out of the water. And the one dude, one of my favorite dudes, Colin, he his mom signed him up. He didn't even he didn't even he wasn't even gonna do this. His yeah. mom signed him up, and not and he's 18 years old. Dude from Mississippi, country boy, amen. And now he's in the top five of American Idol. Like his life has completely changed. He was uh, what was he? He was like a uh, cooling and uh, heating contractor or something. I don't know. Yeah. He worked for like a he worked for like an air conditioning company, I think. Um, labor guy, Luke, labor guy. Luke Obviously, Luke wasn't going guy. wasn't going to college out of high school, which is. Which is fine. Fuck. If I had to do it again, over again, I I don't know. I don't know if I would or if I wouldn't. But that's neither here nor there. This kid, 18 years old, you know, working on AC units four months ago. And now he's in the top five in American Idol singing his ass off. And his life has completely changed. It's pretty cool, I think. It's awesome. It's unreal. <sighs> I mean, I the... It's so hard because, you know, the last 10 people or whatever, 12 people, or when does it start? Yeah, I think 12 people when America starts voting. No, no, it was 24 or 26. Oh, 24 when America starts voting. Okay. Yeah. And some, and I, and I get it, but a lot of, you know, America is going to go with the people that they like in the story a lot. They get they get it right a lot, but man, my, my top five would have been a little different than the top five that are in there. Yeah, but, I mean... It's so hard. The top, the last 10, the top 10, top 12, whatever, we're all, they're just all unreal. It's like, yeah, they're vote, all unreal. How do you, un, how do you vote people off? I'd go to any of their concerts, to be completely honest. Yeah. And the, all five of the ones that are still in there, all totally different, totally different yeah. humans, totally different styles, totally different genres. But dude, like last night they had the duets on there singing Ed Sheeran songs. And I don't know who paired all them up, but they're the duets that they were singing were Fire. absolutely phenomenal. Fire. Phenomenal. They definitely did a good job with that. Um, phenomenal. Phenomenal. Colin and Megan are just, Oh, they got gosh. that rasp. They got that Southern soul, that Southern rasp. And I'm telling you what, it's, if the stars align down the road and two of them make a baby, I think George Strait is just going to pop out again. Reincarnation to George, George Strait. He's just going to right out of there, right out of there. Or he's going to already going to have an original song wrote. Yep. He's no, going to strum it on a freaking. He probably will come out with a cowboy hat on too. And maybe some boots. I don't know. Spurs might hurt Megan a little bit coming out of there, but you know, I'm <laughs> just, I'm just all I'm saying is that is going to be one country son of a gun. Good. It's good shit. That is good shit. Anyway, let's get to it, ladies and Jerry's. Another another episode of Goose Chasing, episode number 13, brought to you by Tag and Brag, Tag and Brag Productions, Tag and Brag Apparel. Visit our website, 
tagandbrag.co for the monthly apparel of choice and tag and brag land management. We are getting down to the nitty gritty, but we can still help y'all out. So if you guys want to build a land management plan, we might as well build it together. We might as well. You know, I want to send a shout out to some of our, some of our partners um, that support us very, very much. Uh, Rocky Boots, just want to send a shout out and a thank you to everybody at Rocky for the support we've been with Rocky since 2016. Kind of crazy. It, this is our seventh year, um, Ohio-based company. And yeah, I mean, they've just wholeheartedly supported what we've done, our authenticity. They've given us more responsibilities as the years have gone on and the uh, the love is real. So just want to say thank you to them. Onyx Maps, uh, our buddy Jared over at Onyx is uh, one of the boys at this point. Um, we've been with Onyx for four years. Once again, the support that they've given us and the product that they that they give to all of us is forever evolving and forever changing for the better. And uh, once again, they've given us you know, opportunities to expand and grow, um, with them over the last four years. So we cannot thank them enough for that. Um, fourth arrow camera arms, Joe Coy, uh, and the, and the group over there. Well, I mean, same thing. We just keep growing with them. Um, it's probably one of our, as self filmers, it's probably one of our, um, probably one of our most important tools, honestly, to allow us to do what we do, um, allow us to film on the go, run and gun, um, and you know, self film. So D Dean and I can be, you know, dually active. Um, but shout out to those guys. Thank you to them. XOP, Brock, Tom, Byron, the whole crew. We got a whole gang of crew coming on board this year. I'm ex super excited. The, uh, the run and gun crew XOP hangers um just want to say thank you and a shout out to them and finally uh moultrie mobile mark olis has become a dear friend of ours over the last couple years and their cameras are second to none i honestly i don't know why you would use anything else from a cell camera from the cell camera game when you can get a cell camera for under 100 bucks doesn't have a sd card very reliable very easy to set up. You can go on Amazon and get two of them for like 179. You know, obviously you got to pay for a little bit of a plan um, after that, but I don't know. They've drastically helped us over the last couple of years. They make it easy. They make it fun. Dean, Uncle Jay, my dad and I are all connected on the same login of our app. So we share cameras from North Dakota, Ohio, New York, Tennessee, Kentucky, all over the place. And you know, we're instantly tuned in. So thank y'all. Thank you, all of our partners, um, but those specifically because uh, they make our job easier and they make life more fun. They sure do. Well, Dino, we had a pretty eventful week at camp or weekend. I don't know what you want to call it. Opening week, opening couple days up at Camp Cutlet last week um you know as always we talked about it on the last podcast but we we battled the elements that's for, that's for sure my goodness we battled battled the elements and we we knew we were going to so the forecast just it was it looked horrible and it and it was although opening morning we got blessed with at least a couple hours of you know a, a nice morning it was clear 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 morning Tuesday the Tuesday Wednesday were a little bit of a different picture but it was a awesome couple of days honestly for how tough the tough the hunting was uh opening morning I don't know that was a they read the script couldn't have read it any better we were just talking um with a few friends about just hunting with decoys not hunting with decoys um, 
you know, we have some friends that are like, I'll never use decoys. They never work. We have some people that are like, I'll never hunt without decoys. Um, we've, we kind of do a little bit of both, but obviously from a, from a camera standpoint, filming the decoys are always fun to use. But in, in New York, we have never had six. I shouldn't say we haven't had success with the decoys. We've never had birds come up and literally attack them. We've had the decoys work. Um, a couple years ago, the bird I shot the second day of the season, actually, all we had was a hen out, but it definitely drew the birds in close enough to get a shot. Um, but opening morning this year, those, uh, a, a Jake and Longbeard saw our Jake and hen decoy set up. And we always feel like once there's, when there's two birds together, it's a competition thing. When there's a single the decoys, it's always a lot tougher for them to work, but when there's two and one commits and then they almost like, they want to compete, they almost race each other to the decoys. It's like, it's game over. They're coming. Yeah. They're coming in. Yeah. And once they get to those decoys, I mean, what just the experience this year, like I've from my Jeb hunt in Virginia to the one with uncle Jay in Tennessee, now two up in New York, literally all four hunts, you know, multiple birds coming in and attacking the decoys i'm like what what is happening this year loving the decoys i almost they're in such like a different world when they're on those decoys i almost want to it would be funny to test what you can do or get away with yeah if you could just like walk out (laughs) yeah the field and be like hey you know if you're up against a tree if you could just like put a fan up and just like walk at them I wonder what the hell would happen because yeah. these things are just some of them. I mean, we've seen videos. They'll sit there for 20 minutes if you don't shoot them or, do you know. Right. Well, in the case in point with opening day was fun because um, we had, well, we had dad up in camp. We had Uncle Jay and Uncle Jay's buddy, Chris, who's now our buddy, Chris, longtime tag and brag follower. And uh, so we appreciate that. And also, uh, soon to be retired army guy. So thank you for your, thank you for your services and your sacrifice, Chris. But, um, we had the five of us up in camp. It's always, it's always fun having a handful of people up there that we can, you know, especially when you're running and gunning for turkeys, it's like, you know, you can kind of play off of each other. Everybody's usually in the action, whatever. But, um, we had, we had birds gobbling right off the roost and we decided to go behind camp dad was going to go by himself, but we convinced him to come with us, which I'm, I'm glad because it ended up working out. We had a awesome hunt that all three of us shared together, but they were gobbling off the roost and they, we finally, they flew down. I mean, we were probably what within a couple hundred yards, I bet. Yeah. And they flew down. We could, we noticed, we could hear them noticeably quieter because they were on the ground. Dean hit the call once bird fired up. Kind of went silent for a minute or two. Hit the call again. He was noticeably closer. And then it was just like shut up and and let it let it happen at that point. Because he was, it, we clearly had his interest in in our hands. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I like, I say this too. The nice thing about the decoys, especially when you're, we had not set up in probably a one acre um, food plot. And you know, we're, I'm not any professional caller by any means, but the nice thing is with decoys is if you can get, if you can just know that the Turkey knows you're there, like if you can just hit the call one or two times and he responds, like as soon as he, as soon as you get that response from him, like you can just shut up cause he's going to come search and look. And then all he's got to do is see those decoys normally. Yeah. And then you're, committed so you almost can't mess yourself up in any way and that's honestly what we did i think i ended up calling twice and the second or second time when he cut the distance in half we were like okay we know he's we know he's coming looking yeah and and i mean he was and he did he did i mean they got they they crested the hill they're probably 100 yards from us and it didn't take them long to see the decoys. And when they saw the decoys, it was gobbler and a Jake. I mean, they came, they came running and 
this gobbler hammered the decoy. I mean, knocked him off his stand, was standing on top of him. I don't know. That's a crazy part to me. Like, gobbler and a Jake roll in, you know, to the decoys, to the Jake and hen decoy. And the gobbler is hammering this Jake decoy, like hammering it. But he's standing right next to where he came in with a Jake. So I don't understand what their mindset is or what they're thinking, but that doesn't make a whole ton of sense to me. And then he knocked the decoy down and the decoy's like laying on its side on the ground and he gets on top of it and acts like he's breeding it. The Jake decoy. I mean, I don't know. I, turkeys are so bizarre to me. Very I just strange. don't. I, I don't get it. I don't get it. Um, but it was funny because we had the setup. We had ourselves set up under these pines right off the field. I was filming. We all had each. All three of us had our guns. But what we wanted to happen was our my dad to to get a shot. And he was off to our right and he was literally, we had a, like one of those buddy stand pads out for him to sit up against a tree, but he was laid out like Chris Kyle, you know, (laughs) ready, ready to like snipe one of these things. And just the, the way that they came into the decoys, he couldn't get turned enough to get a shot. So I'm sitting there filming Dean's in the middle. And Dean kind of has a tree in between him and the and the decoys. And then my dad's to the right where, you know, there's a little bit more of an open shot at the decoys. But where he's laying down or, you know, the way that he's laying down, that really wasn't going to happen. So this thing is this turkey is hammering the decoy, knocks him off his stand, walking around him, pecking at his head like I'm sitting there going, I mean, minutes are going by and I'm like, all right, guys, you know, I'm filming. I'm like, seen enough. Let him have it because the Jake was kind of, you know, he was kind of circling and he was like coming closer to us. He was 12 yards probably at one point. And I don't know if he saw us, saw the camera lens, whatever, but he definitely got like a little nervous or he was just like off kilter from the actual decoys and the other gobbler hammering them and so he kind of walked off down the food plot a little bit the other bird the the gobbler had no clue what was going on i'm sitting there going like hey somebody friggin' shoot this thing like <laughs> and finally dean the 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 gobbler was able to or the gobbler got on top of the decoy and he was facing dead away from us Dean was able to scoot over a little bit to his right to get a clear shot. When he came down, it was perfect. He picked his head up, and it was A, B, C later at that point. Um, But, I mean, like the footage is just unbelievable. It's awesome. You know, him attacking the decoy and stuff. And, um, I mean, my, my first experience of that type of decoy action working up in New York and definitely dad's first time really ever seeing that type of like interaction with the decoys. So it was just cool, you know, all of us to to be together and enjoy that and kick off the New York turkey season. I mean, literally it was 615. That bird was done. It was. Yeah. So it was early. It was five, 10 minutes after sunrise. When it works out like that, it's just, yeah, you look at the clock, birds on the ground, you're like, now what? What do we do now? Yeah, go to, it's go to breakfast. It's early. Yeah, unreal. Opening morning, it was it was cool. And then obviously t- two days late. Well, yeah, the weather just kind of came in at, at after that. And it was Yeah, I mean it gave us it it gave us a little window of opportunity. And for those of you who are listening now, you can watch this hunt on our youtube channel um we've got three three vlogs from the new york turkey season that'll be up throughout this week so keep tuning into our youtube channel to check out those actual the actual hunts and the vlogs that we did for those hunts but um opening day day, it gave us it, it actually gave us more of a window of opportunity than i thought um the 
we just we we Dean and I had another bird working later. I don't know what time it was, ten thirty or eleven o'clock. Yeah. Um, Uncle Jay and Chris did not see that they. I don't think they saw much other than hens for the day. But then the next day, you know, we woke up and it was it was literally a steady rain, sleet, snow all freaking day, all day. And we didn't hear a bird. We didn't see a bird. Uncle Jay and Chris, I think, saw a few once again. But, man, it was just, I mean, and it was windy, too. So, it, like, the calls weren't going to work. You know, I mean, unless they were right on top of you, calling was just was not going to work. Keeping them dry, too, is a pain in the... It doesn't even matter if you keep them dry when it's raining and snowing. Like, they, it's just moisture in the air. The Unless you're good at a mouth call. Yeah. Normally the other calls don't work very well, but, and the birds just don't want to. I can't imagine the birds wanting to do much of anything in that weather. They, they didn't. I'm, I'm honestly shocked when, uh, uncle Jay shot his bird that he, you know, a couple of them were even gobbling because it was so nasty. Well, yeah. Then, you know, fast forward to the third day, we wake up with an inch, inch and a half of snow on the ground. Literally it's May, May, uh, 3rd. And, you know, we all go out. I mean, we had we had three days to hunt. We gave ourselves three days to hunt with Uncle Jay and I being in town. Um, Yeah, we gave ourselves three days to hunt. And I mean, we've had this plan for a month or so now. So it's we weren't certainly weren't changing anything. It was long travels up there. But um, yeah, we went in and we Dean and I went to a spot where normally the birds fly down and come across like a massive open field. And we actually, we, we did see one hen come down and across. We had high hopes of a, of a gobbler being behind her, but we, we could hear birds gobbling and kind of more in uncle Jay and Chris's direction. And sure enough, I mean, it had to be quarter to seven. They, they worked a bird in literally in the snow with snow coming down, worked this bird in, came out from behind them, attacked the decoy hammered it to the ground once again and and uncle jay was able to make a shot and and get it done the ugly wet bird (laughs) for turkeys do not look good when they are wet no i mean that's that's if you have all season to hunt yeah i mean some of the that's some of the reason why you don't even hunt on those days it's like right they don't look good coming in they're hard to deal with when you get on it's just a wet it's a wet bird yeah um but when you invest a lot of time and coming up for three days and that's all you have i mean honestly it's a it was a sweet hunt as far as like footage and stuff it's pretty crazy hammering down snow and bird comes in and he's working the decoy well and he's fired up and gobbling and stuff i mean it just yeah to show you that you know when that thing is feeling good down there when he's got a little you know, rooster, rooster crowing down there and he's, uh, feeling his oats a little bit. doesn't matter what it is, who it is, or when it is and the weather conditions that are involved, you know, the pursuit of the hen is all that matters. Really is. And yeah, Uncle Jay, I mean, where do you guys see this footage? The, it's pretty funny. This gobbler comes in, he literally looks like he went through like the dishwasher a couple times and he's trying to strut and his friggin' tail feathers are all are all fucked up. You can up. see right through them all. Oh my gosh. He's trying to look intimidating and stuff like that. And it just looks like he is worn down and hung over and hard up. That's what he looks like. <laughs> <laughs> but it worked. But it worked and got it done. Got a couple uh exciting hunts. And like I said, we'll be, those will be going out on our YouTube channel, or they already are out on our YouTube channel by the time this comes out um, throughout this week. So y'all go check it out. Check it out. Senior Chuckers over here. Do you you guys hunt this weekend at all? We hunted, um, we did hunt Saturday morning. Heard a couple birds yobbling, but they were super far away. You know, I don't, it's, it's been, um, it's been a weird 
year. Obviously, we started off the first three days with with a bang, and it seems like the like the two birds we shot were like the two birds that were using our our property. It's the crazy thing is all winter long. I mean, the amount of birds we have wintering on the property, which I know having like grain food plots late into the winter, it, it attracts a lot of surrounding birds. So it, it makes sense that way. But I mean, we had to have had 20 plus long beards, it seemed like on the using parts of the property and, um, and they're all gone. Um, it's just, it's at least when I've been up there from a listening standpoint, you, you're not hearing them. Um, and normally they expose themselves in the fields close by. I haven't seen them. Um, they're not on camera. Um, that's it's, yeah, it is really weird. I mean, like this past year, especially the winter time and early spring, there was groups of turkeys up there. Like I've never seen before. I mean, no, I mean, ins- yeah, they were insane. Flocked up and they, obviously they, they flock up, but more than we've seen before in a springtime. But yeah, they've just, they've shifted around a little bit. Our hopes are that they, um, I want to try to go up, maybe hunt tomorrow morning or, or maybe Wednesday morning just to kind of see what's going on a little bit. But, um, will it be nicer up there at that point? Yeah. It's both the, all this whole week is supposed to be like 65, 70 and sunny clear. Yeah. Them clear, them clear mornings. I don't know. It's it's like, I feel like it's hard for them not to gobble in those well, mornings yeah and there's a lot of other there's a lot of other animals a lot of other birds being vocal as well which helps helps them be vocal you know they're challenging calls and um hooters they're challenging the hooters 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 but i love hooters love hooters but yeah it's been weird i, I like there's the two or three spots where there's always a bird or two roosting, at least on our property, there there isn't right now. There hasn't been, so it's it's interesting. But you know, as soon as these leaves get full on, which they're close, I mean, they're getting there. Um, usually, you get some birds that switch up and change their roost and whatnot. So hopefully, that'll that'll happen. Um, definitely been a handful that have gotten shot around. We've heard some shooting going on. Um, well, we've shot a couple too, so that yeah, obviously sh- makes a difference. Def- definitely does. So I don't know. Hopefully, we get another opportunity at a, a bird up there. But if not, we laid down two. It's already been a good, good season. Yeah, no doubt. I know. I'm gonna still keep trying down here in Tennessee. The season goes till the 28th of May. It's they shifted it back down here too. But man, this weekend and even right now, it is just a straight pisser. I mean, it's going, it's... Oh, really? It's, uh, oh, my God, dude. We're getting rain. We had thunderstorms all night. Our stuff on the porch was blowing around. Our rocking chairs were hammering the wall. And, and, like, it was nuts last night. It got a little It got a little crazy, and it's supposed to get... We're supposed to get storms throughout the day again, and then thunderstorms tonight, too, so... um, It flip-flopped. We're, yeah. We're sunny and... 65 here yeah and uh but it's gonna be war- like as soon as this this moves out the warm comes in i mean there's the two-week forecast down here there's the highs are all in the 80s yeah that's so, awesome um yeah i don't know where i'll go or what i'll do but i definitely want to try and fill one more turkey tag before the season's over with i've i don't know i it's it's uh the turkey hunting has juvenated with me this year for whatever reason. I'm not really sure why, why that is not that it hasn't in the past. I mean, I love it. It's just, you know, our struggles in the past have made me not love it as much, but I guess when it happens, like I've been, I'm trying to think I've been, I've been out well, three days in New York, two birds killed, uh, two, or three days down here, two birds killed, one day in Virginia, and a bird killed. So that's probably part of the reason. The yeah. the, the ratio is uh having success. Is over fifty percent success rate. So that definitely definitely helps. But it's 
it's fun. Turkey hunting is. It's fun, and you get a re, you know, the the just the spring. It's you know, like the weather's just starting to get good, and the, I don't know. It's just they're uh, they're cool birds to film. Yeah, do, doing their thing. Um, well, and it's yeah. When I mean, like you said, when you have when you have those clear mornings, those nice mornings where there's other birds and wildlife just waking up, and the sun's rising. You get a gobble or two. Like I don't know. That's there's something serene and special about that, I will say. Makes me want to keep doing work to con- conserve the the hatches, the hatches and the habitat. You think yeah. uh you think part of the reason for the camp birds um I don't know if they're necessarily they've laughed, but like is it food? Is it I mean, but there's still a lot of food on our property. No, yeah, I don't. And I don't some of the fields are til- like not tilled now, but they're, you know, like cornfields are cut. Like, I don't know. There's just a lot. There's a lot of opportunity to peck around and oh, eat they, gene bugs. And yeah, no, there's not. It's I don't think it's a food thing. They, they eat grass, clover. I mean, we have so much of all that. And then obviously you go into our a lot of our turnip plots, which are the two spots we hit or we killed the birds on. Um, True. Our. I mean, they're, it's basically dirt. So there's so much bugging and whatever they do, they 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 like lay down in the dirt and rustle, dust their feathers and stuff. But there's so much opportunity for all that. I don't think it's, I don't think it's that. I just think it's, um, I, I don't know. It's just a, it's just a weird year on that property there's definitely birds around like i I drive around our block and the area and i've seen i've seen strutters i'm seeing the same ones which is telling me that like it seems like when they're there they're visible they're kind of predictable at times usually they're out in the fields you know an hour before they go to roost and then they're out there at some point in the mornings um it seems like there's a ton more hens than they're I mean, at least in years past, like at least, you know, the three days that I've, I experienced, like we saw a ton of hens, whether it was, you know, encounters or on camera, whatever, but we like, there was a lot more hens and the weird part was, and maybe this was just from the mild winter and maybe the, the, the actual breeding is like, was expedited or not expedited but like pushed up a little bit in as far as the the timing of the season goes but it seems like a lot of lone hens too that are just you know either nesting or which is kind of odd i guess you know for this time of year for seeing that many lone hens i feel like is kind of odd for this time of year but maybe the maybe the breeding just went on a little bit earlier this year yeah it may have i think when you know when you're seeing that many solo hens that usually means they're they're they have their nests established because they don't nest by each other they want they're kind of territorial with that so yeah they're all nested doing their doing their thing which it could i mean for a potential hatch this year it could be a good thing if if a lot of the birds got their breeding done early you know saves a lot of the um you know, you go in first couple of days of the season, a lot of birds get shot. Um, you know, obviously less can breed when they do that. So if a lot of it's done, well, maybe this year we'll have one hell of a hatch. That'd be cool. Bring them on. More birds, although it makes it a lot harder on you, cuz, cause them birds can eat. Especially oh when God. there's especially when there's sixty to eighty of them. <laughs> it's crazy. We have you know, we don't have a lot of we don't have a lot of uh room for planting corn but we do we get about an acre and a half in and the past few years worried about the deer how quickly they're going to eat it and this fall and winter we'd go up there and sit and there would be 60 turkey you know they're jumping up and trying to like pull down the corn cobs and i'm like these things are just destroying this field ruthless and they're in there they're in there like all day long yeah, so, they don't leave. You you don't and you don't think about that, you know, you're you're providing all of this food which you think is is for the deer, but so much 
so many other animals eats it. Oh my like, gosh. And you uh, can not hear just them. turkeys, other birds. You, oh, like you sit so in that blind birds. up on, you sit up in that blind on the Ponderosa and there's cardinals and blue jays and chickadees and they're flying Chipmunks. this everywhere this way and sideways squirrels groundhogs i mean raccoons crows like it's it's insane and honestly we haven't even experienced it quite as much during the fall and the late months because they're kind of i don't know if they're denned up or whatever but but the bears too like yeah and when the but when the corn is growing in the summertime the you know you get the right bear or the wrong bear in there depending on how you look at it and they can destroy a lot in oh, a short be, amount of time they'll be 20 yard circle just flattened that's when you know it's a bear gone just rolling around in there rolling around like blue on their back just crushing corn ripping stalks out and having freaking street tacos and you think you're planting the shit for the deer it's funny a lot of things to a lot, of, a lot of miles to feed up there. A lot of miles to feed, that's right. That's right. But uh, speaking of bears, did you see that camera that or the picture that came in on the... Yeah, that's not. We were just talking to several people about how it's, it's weird that we haven't seen bears this year yet because it's normally every April they come out of hibernating in their dens and whatever and they we see them on the like they're usually hungry so they're very active um and sows usually have their cubs so they're trying to feed them and you just see them they're they're traveling around and they're they're moving and uh we haven't seen any this year but yeah last night last Gotta... night at about 3 a.m there's a one picture of a sow and three cubs walking by the camera don't want to run into her. No, you don't want to run into her. Don't want to run into her going into your turkey perch early in the morning. No. That would not be fun. Hell no. Better have your weapon loaded up at that point. Shit. <laughs> With more than two rounds. With more than a godfather round of bullets. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You only had three bullets. What is the matter with you, David? <laughs> uh, nothing. I didn't, I didn't think, think I would need more. I didn't think I'd need more than three, and we were in a rush. We were in a rush Hashanah. Not to get crazy on sports, but what do we think of the... Uh, have you looked at the five finalists for the Cleveland Browns logo? No. Wait, I, why? I, 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 like the the, I don't the know. center the the center of the field logo? Yeah, I don't know if they're thinking about putting the, these on the helmets, which they should give us a friggin' some logo. identity. I've been saying this for ten years that the Browns need to rebrand. Um, and even if they don't rebrand, just put something on the fucking helmet. Change something. Rebrand. They need a rebrand. They need a logo. They need an identity. I'm sorry. Rocking a rocking a hat that's got your helmet on it is not cool uh, it, no, not to mention it's got your helmet hum, it's got your helmet hum with it. no logo on it because yeah. that's the logo yeah it makes I mean, no how embarrassing sense. of how embarrassing of a franchise where you you don't even have a logo i'm trying to pull i'm trying to pull this up where are you seeing it is it go to cleveland report? browns on uh instagram oh okay I had a vision as soon as they said they were going to let people like submit their ideas. I'm yeah. like, oh my God, there's going to be so many good ones that they're like, we're going to have a badass logo. And I had envisioned this like kind of mean looking badass dog. Oh, and dude. And look at these fucking things, dude. Yeah. These are actually pretty good. What one do you like the best? Dude. This is the, in my opinion, this is the best one. I can't see it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I, I, I thought the same thing. What the, the what only the, one the... that's got somewhat of a intimidating. I mean, this one's kind of cool, I guess. Yeah. No, that one's the best one. Like, 
I think it's at, it's either that one or it's this one. That that one's kind of mean too. But it's got less character, less I but I do I do kind of like it. They do need to do something. I mean, we got, we got, we got, we got the dog pound for a reason. Like, put a friggin' dog on the helmet. Put Jeez, a dog on it. It's insane. Fuck. It's we insane. already lost. We already lost the Indians. We don't need to friggin'. We got a logoless football team that we bitch about being terrible every year. Yeah, I mean, and honestly, the elf. I know people make fun of the elf. I, I, I personally kind of like it i at least think it adds a little bit of character to the uniforms to the field to whatever i would have been fine with putting that on the something needs to go on the damn helmet yeah i'm with you i'm with you it's kind of ridiculous if you ask me it's kind of ridiculous so they're doing that all again this year. They're trying to figure out. They'll, what they'll probably do go through all this bullshit, and then they probably won't put any of these on the helmet. They'll be like, "No, we can't. We got to keep a blank helmet." Yeah, because we got to keep. We got to. We got to make sure that you know we don't offend the dog lovers in this country for sure. Because there's not all all dogs aren't mean, so we don't want to offend the guy, no. the dog owners that have nice dogs, and because all dogs aren't mean. No, there's a group of activists that that believe it promotes dog fighting. Well, and, and therefore, and God we, forbid, therefore and we can't put them on the helmets. God forbid a dog sees this. Oh my God, and he gets mad. Oh my gosh, they'll be we so can't offended do that to them. No, how could you do that? Would you want to do that to your dog? No. If you were a dog, would you want to see that? Would you want to look at that and say that's a representation of my canine? friends and me no you wouldn't want to see if that. my dog could talk he would instantly say that is offensive it's wrong and i want it removed i want a i want a girl dog up there with a wiener <laughs> <laughs> that would be that would be appropriate yeah because that that it, we're gonna <laughs> that, resem- that represents modern America. Hey, if that girl dog doesn't female have a dogs, wiener, female dogs with wieners. If that girl dog doesn't have a wiener, then I'm sorry. Do not put it on the field or no. the helmet. No. Or the shoulder pads. It's not politically correct. Don't even put it on the shoulder pads because girls and guys have different shoulders. So that would be offensive. My goodness. What are, what are this? What's this world going to come up with next? Call it a he bitch. <laughs> anyway, that was crazy. There's a black fly in your Chardonnay. <laughs> Not to get back on American Idol, but I loved the fact that they had Alanis Morissette on there. Dude, she, she is so alive. good. How old is she? She looks 35. She's 48. She's 48? She's 48. I thought she was old. I thought, for some reason, I thought she was older than that, but she looks fantastic. She looks great. You like how she sings when she's like, ah, like away from the, because ah, she's got the pipes that will just blow the fucking sound That's system said, out Alina. of the building. She Elena can't sing right into the microphone. <laughs> Elena kept saying, like, what is she doing? I'm like, well, she's she's clearing the pipes out, and she can't do that into the microphone. Yeah. She'll blast the crowd out of the building. My gosh. She's like she's... a roaring female silverback. Oh, my God. <laughs> but, gosh, her, her fucking jams are so good. She could turn the fuck up. And, I, I'm dude. Gonna be, I'm going to be working out to uh, more set today. That's for sure. Dude. Kelly and I were looking up also some of the like there was so eight there was eight people left so they played eight of her songs and only one of them I didn't know which was the one that Eam played the Hawaiian dude which he fucking killed that but dude then you start looking at all the songs that didn't nobody Get played picked, and I'm like these are good too yeah well when they started saying they were they're gonna sing more set songs i'm like shit i'm gonna know like 
like there's only two good ones and then they yeah. all and i'm like no no every one of these is it's great. good it's good oh my god they're all good and honestly the ed sheeran songs that were sung were all fucking good dude ed, and ed sheeran is just a that dude is talented yeah he is he kind of went he he went away for a little bit i know i'm ex- i kind of want to check out his album i listened to a couple of songs the, the song he sang last night is great i haven't listened to the other ones but his new album's out so but gosh more set what a just what a freaking 90s vibe. icon icon oh because i got one hand in my pocket and the other one is giving a high five <laughs> I freaking uh, love it. A little too ironic. Yeah, I really do think. <laughs> it's like rain on your wedding day. It's free ride. Oh, oh, shit. If you don't know those songs and you grew up in the 90s, then you were living under a fucking rock. Get knowing them. It's always cool to go back and listen. Like, there's a lot of good new stuff out. You know, you got the Morgan Wallen fans. You got the Taylor Swifties. You got the fucking Justin Bieber people and all that stuff. And it's all fine and good. But when you go back to some of that music that, like, you know, we were listening to just indirectly because of our parents when we were, like, five, six, eight years old. That's the shit right there. I mean, that is that is the shit. It just is. There's not there was no like crazy electronics and technology and like all this shit. It was just like the music, the soul. Fuck. Well, and you see it when like when Alanis Morissette performed last night, she doesn't do anything but sing. Like there's no theatrics involved, which don't get me wrong, like I understand there is an art to actually performing now, but I like there is nothing better than a singer and a guitar and that's it. And a yeah. song and and a song that preferably they wrote. But that's that is art. I agree. I understand like the the people that sing and they got to dance and they got to do all this crazy ass bullshit and they have to have they have to have 117 backup dancers behind them it's like it's got to be a distraction Twerking. because they like i don't even understand it really it again just perform- it, i mean it's just it's just the theatrics yeah, just performance I, hey I, to each their own you know no, I, no and i get it i get it at some point there's it's cool but as a music fan, I don't want to see any of that stuff. I understand it for like the Super Bowl, I guess, and all that stuff. But like, I think that's kind of why American Idol is cool because you don't see that that much anymore. Mm-hmm. Like, most people feel like they have to have all these theatrics in their performance. I just yeah. want to see you. I want to see you sit on a bar stool and let it rip with a guitar and just freaking let it rip. Sarah serenade. It's like rain. That's what gets my biscuits bacon. That's what gets my biscuits bacon when that happens. It's a free ride when you're already paid. (laughs) And who would have figured? Yeah, I mean, I agree, but in honestly, even on American Idol, like sometimes there, there does, there, there gets to be some theatrics behind it, and I'm like, hey, hey, calm that shit down in the background. Calm it down. You know, yeah. ch- you know, calm that shit down. I can't hear this person sing like I want to hear him sing. Well, th- some of the contestants were trying to do it, too. Oh, yeah, for sure. They definitely were. But, well, you know, well, what? look at the contestants that were all getting wild with their dancing and the crazy stuff. They're not in it anymore. No, they're you're exactly right. None of them. All those ones that all the top five, none of them are theatrical. No, but Jeremiah or uh, Zachariah, that yeah. dude is a fucking, he's a fucking, I love him. He reminds me of someone like I he, Paul Bolito. He's a theoret, he's a, <laughs> he's a theatric fucking black iron gunner, dude. He, that dude is a black iron gunner that can sing. 
Oh, he's not friggin' shooting no guns like no. Him. No, and that's Belito's, hilarious. Belito's just that dude is a Monster. I would not want to mess with that guy. No. He is if you guys haven't don't know Black Iron Gunner on Instagram, you gotta go check him out. If you like shooting guns and shit, you gotta go check him out. He's one a beast. of our one of the homies. C Town, hometown homies. He's a beast. Not only on the gun range, but now he's a jujitsu artist who my goodness. I mean the Gosh, dude's like the, the dude's like pushing three hundred. I mean you're but you're, it's like, you're not fucking uh, solid three hundred. Oh my god. Solid it, three hundred. Jack. Remember we used to yeah. play basketball with Paul? I wouldn't want to get anywhere within a ten foot radius of one that of guy. his elbows would send me fourteen feet in the air oh out of god. bounds in the other direction. Just trying to get a rebound fucking like, blew my shoulder out and yeah. You I'm gotta coughing have, up blood. You got to have those mats on the walls around the whole gym. Otherwise, yeah. I'm not playing. Clear. <laughs> there's, there's a new definition to clear them out. Gosh. Clear the space. I wish, you know, the way the Cavs played the Knicks, I wish Belito would have been in there that, freaking tossing bows because I'm like, he ain't going to yeah. put up with any of these dudes' shit. He would just be like. He'd, Julius he'd Randall would still be hurting right he now. He would have fouled out in like freaking 14 seconds, but at least you're. <laughs> At least you're sending a message. <laughs> send a message is right. <laughs> Holy shit, send a message. It's like rain on your wedding day. Man, I'm going to be singing that song the rest of the day, unfortunately. Oh, man, so good. It's a free ride. And you only got a spoon or a fork. <laughs> oh, what else we got coming up there, cuzzy? Food Pop Chronicles has got to be firing up soon, right? I it is. I I did uh Turn I sprayed some. I sprayed some clover plots uh mm-hmm. 2 days ago. Mhm. Got it going with the uh the grass out. Get it out of there. We don't need that grass bag in that clover plot. Free and clear. Ooh. But yeah, I'm going to be honestly probably this week I'm going to be spraying Spraying a, a lot of the food plots, getting ahead of it so that they don't get. Because what we're about bushy. three four weeks away from planting kernels. Yeah, Maybe, and, not even and beans. Yeah, three. I mean, yeah, ideally three weeks. Yeah, right on. Get it all sprayed this week. Uh, honestly, a lot of our spot. Well, we have two. Hopefully, two new fields going in that have haven't been planted, and I maybe ever. So. Not in our lifetime. That'll be an interesting, um, yeah, that'll be an, a very interesting project to see what those do. So, um, we need rain, <laughs> followed but, by some sunshine, <laughs> and then a little more rain. So, our beans can grow. <laughs> We need rain, followed by some sunshine, and then a little more rain, so our shit can grow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Food plots. Mm-hmm. We'll be chasing big bucks before you know it, cuz. We will. You been shooting at all? Your bow? No. You gotta get that thing out. Dust it off, cuz. How's your shoulder? You know, the shoulder feels, it feels good. I've been getting back in the gym and I've felt good doing a lot of workouts that I haven't felt good doing before. So, um, I actually need to shoot just to kind of see how it, how she feels, but it'd be nice if I didn't have pain there when I was yanking the bowl back, yanking her back. I got, um, one hand in my my pocket. pocket. And the other one is holding a cigarette. The other one is icing my shoulder. <laughs> uh, oh, the last couple summers shooting has just not been fun for me because my shoulder is in so much pain. Um, I say shoulder. I actually got it diagnosed with a, uh, I've got some tears in my, Oh, what the hell is it called? It's the upper bicep tendon. It basically is in your shoulder, ties in your shoulder. 
Um, but well, when you pull a bow back, it is not fun and it hurts like absolute hell, especially when I've been sitting in the cold for two hours. Um, so hopefully I got a quarter zone shot that at least temporarily worked that or thing. maybe not temporary. They said it could, they said, you know, you could respond well up to like two years from it. So I don't want to get surgery, but I hope that's not the solution. I feel that. I feel that one hundy. I feel that one hundy. One hundy. Yeah, I mean, I've been shooting a little bit. Got that new Ultra View release. Loving it. Absolutely loving it. Um, we got some new bows on order, which is pretty cool. So yeah, get those dialed in. But yeah, I'm uh, I'm Jones and man, I'm already put in. We put in for Kansas. Got some more. Um, points for iowa um put in for montana um obviously doing the north dakota thing again this year hopefully getting some new land in ohio hopefully getting some new land down in here in tennessee got a good lease not a lease but got a good permission property up in kentucky i mean we got we got options like there ain't no shortage of flinging going on if we willing to put the work in nope there is so it's exciting stuff. Um, yeah, that is very exciting stuff. I'm looking forward to it. I feel feel some some good things coming on this fall, and I'm looking forward to the pursuit. The chase just gets me going, man. The chase gets me going. I, I can't chase. wait. I love the chase. It just turns me on. It turns me on. It's so hard because you want to see some like. You want to see bone right now, but I mean, you d- yeah, I do. like I do too. The turkeys have been definitely, you know, kind of mellowing the the boner out, if you will, um, which is good. <laughs> you know, calm that sucker down, stay in your shorts for a second. But I, I mean, calm, down here in calm Tennessee, the rooster, calm the old rooster down, cock a doodle, quiet but that bad boy down. There's a couple of, down here in Tennessee. Up on the Holy Land where Uncle Jay hunts, uh, and actually behind his house a little bit, too. We got on camera over the weekend that they got some good stuff protruding. They got some good stuff protruding from their from the bases of their forehead. Boing. And that's exciting. Um, yeah. I'm just... Oh, the pursuit of wild game just... <laughs> Lights my fires, grinds my gears. I'll tell you. Really does. <clears throat> but you gotta wait. A lot of work to be done in the process. You gotta, you gotta wait. You gotta shoot that bow. Gotta shoot that bow. Um, well, I don't know. That was a pretty good session for today, I think. Good rap sash. Good rap sesh. Once again, we got some great new content, turkey season content flying out on the uh flying out on the channel all week. So don't forget to stop back into our YouTube channel, Facebook page, Instagram, wherever you take in our content. We'll have directions to the main content all week long. Um and in the coming weeks, obviously, we'll have some more turkey hunting content for you. As we smooth our way into food plot season and food plot chronicles, um, what else? I'm trying to think. I don't know what else right now. I don't know what else. Um, we got some cool new things coming up that uh, are kind of in the pipeline. Some maybe a new new mini series sparking up for this fall compliments of our cult of couple of our uh favorite partners and uh maybe some new a new partnership or two down the old pipeline that we'll be able to talk about here in the near future so oh yeah as always guys if you want to hear something if you want to hear a specific story if you want us to plug into something that you're jonesing about shoot us a message instagram at team tag and brag youtube facebook and tiktok at tag and brag and uh, just, I don't know, let us know what you want to hear. Give us an idea to rap about bullshit, you know. We're, uh, well, we like talking. 
And so you give us a topic. I mean, as we get towards deer season, we're going to be talking a little bit more about the deer hunting side of things. Cool part is keep this thing going throughout the summertime and throughout the fall. And you guys will be able to not only follow us along on our vlogs, but we'll be able to kind of dissect each week's vlogs and what we've experienced week in and week out of our season right on here. So I am looking forward to that specifically because, you know, you'll kind of get feedback from across multiple different states um, all at the same time. It's good stuff. It's great stuff. So y'all keep in touch. Send us a message. Do your thing. Poke at us a little bit. I don't know. Figure it out. Poke it. You poke it, you own it. In the meantime, shoot your bow. Go cackle at a turkey. Just get outside and enjoy nature. It's gonna every be a nice. Once, it's gonna be a nice week. One. Should be a nice week. Yeah. Hopefully this weather clears out of Nashville in the next day or so. Get sunny again. Sounds like it's gonna be sunny up north by Dino and Ohio and in uh, New York. Get outside. I'm telling you. Get it's out good there for you. You got to experience, got to get some vitamin D on your face. Even if it's 10 minutes, it'll make you feel better. I promise. 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 There ain't nothing about nature that isn't going to make you feel good. Mm -hmm. You can go out in the rain and feel good. You could. You're right. You could. It's a choice. It is. It's a choice. So make the choice. Go outside. Do your thing. Love it. Live it. And uh, be grateful. Sm smile at somebody today because maybe they need it. Maybe you need it. I don't know. But you do. We'll be one this every Wednesday right here on Spotify, on YouTube. We'll be flying things off the shelf. We appreciate y'all listening in this week. And we'll see you right back here next Wednesday. Goose chasing, baby. Goose chasing. Love y'all.